We've met so many great dogs along the way, and today we're taking a special look back to some of our favourites. I'm Sarah Jones, and this is Dog Jobs Australia. Nestled in the scrub, somewhere along the coastline near Crib Point, is a secret training location. Training here are a crew of top dogs who specialise in search and rescue scenarios and are used in operations all over the country. Today, I'll be meeting with the team from SADA, otherwise known as Search and Rescue Dogs Australia. So Julie, tell me, how long have you been involved with SADA? Um, we, uh, a friend of mine and I started SADA off in 1994. Uh, was after being competition obedience, competition tracking, and also acknowledging the use of um, dogs in avalanche rescues, uh, land rescues, bush searching. So we started to look around and research how they go about the area search because we'd only ever had tracking as on lead work. So from there, um, we moved along and we had other people come into the team and, and train with their dogs. We all trained our own dogs. And we moved through the area search, bush searching in 1997 when Threadbow happened. Um, it was uh, no dogs in Australia that can do urban search and rescue, which is disaster rescues where people are trapped under rubble. Um, and, and so that was another area. So I started to travel overseas to learn from um, in Europe and the US, you know, how this is done with the dogs, watch the dogs learning, watch the dogs operational. So we've been a, an entity which has been acknowledged by all the emergency service agencies ever since for uh, having deployable um, rescue dogs mm. and dogs that are, uh, can search, locate, alert. In your visit today, we're going to show you how a dog searches through the bush and how he alerts and then how we rescue and then we just relay it on to the um, ambulances if they're or the search managers that we've found somebody. Um, and these dogs have to be um, fluent in agility and scent discrimination. For example, when uh, you know there's search parties out looking in the bush the dog's got to know that that's not who he's looking for. Mm. So if possible, we get them to, to send everybody in the area before we set out. Oh, so if you're working with other searchers, with police, that sort of thing, that's they it. get centred first? Yes. Mm. Oh, well, look, when it's possible. But the dogs know um, when when the, um, the person is injured, trapped or whatever, the adrenaline comes off them. And right, so they smell different. They smell different. And, you know, it, it's the bacteria and the breath that we have to locate, the dogs have to locate first and foremost. Mm. So anyone else walking through the bush, um, it, it's not It's not a... Uh, he might run up to him and say, are you? No, I'm not. No, you're not. And then just move on. That's but they incredible, will, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. I often say to people when I'm giving... Um, discussions, uh, blood, the bacteria and blood recycles and circulates a lot quicker. So just cut yourself if, you, if you're if lost or trapped in the bush. Well, that's a good <laughs> so, tip. Good to know. I'll, I'll store that away yeah, in the back yeah. there. Uh, we have one member who's been with us forever and he is such a great uh, victim. And when we do building searches, um, if, he's, if Collingwood's been playing on the night before, he gets on the garlic pizza and beer, and, <laughs> and we really don't need a dog to find him. You, so could, you could probably sniff him out, you reckon? Could sniff him, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dogs are sort of go nose in the air and they're gone. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, look, we have some dedicated people that come along every week without a dog, and they just want us to be able to survive um, and keep training to a um, an operational level. Mm. And we've got some really good people, which is the main thing now. Mm. And uh, so it's probably a legacy that, that I'd like to leave. We are 
um, affiliated with Victoria Police Search and Rescue, uh, Missing Persons and SES and um, so, you know, any time or bush, bush search and rescue, um, we can go on searches with um, being deployed by any of those agencies. So Tank doesn't really <laughs> want to look at the camera. No. Tank. Tank, Tank has realised that there's a sausage sizzle maybe oh, happening okay. at the back there and is slightly <laughs> distracted, but that's fine. I'm distracted by sausage sizzles as well. After the break, more awesome dogs doing more awesome things. You're watching Dog Jobs Australia. As far as workplaces go, wildlife wonders would be a working dog's dream. And now it's finally time to meet the hero of today's visit, Jimmy. Skylar Psychology's Fiona Jackson spends many a day side by side with the legendary Jimmy. He's a former rescue dog with a heart of gold and a nose for foxes. Frankly, I'm jealous of Fiona, but I'll try not to let it show. So Fiona, we're here with Jimmy. Yes. Going Wonder. for a little wander. So Jimmy, yep, he's doing the work today at Wildlife Wonders. So he's been busy this morning looking for fox gaps, um, fox activity in general. So potentially fox dens as well, and even scavenge sites mm. that we might find if the foxes have been eating on anything. Jimmy will find that as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yep. And he's got quite a na naff little jacket. Um, <laughs> yep. He's got a little aerial poking out even. Yes. Is that, that's the GPS, that's so he can help. That's right, that's his GPS uh, collar, so we keep a, a track of him. I've got my, my GPS unit here, so I track myself on, on this. I also track Jimmy's movements, so we can map where he's been and also map any scats that we pick up. Right, so then you're not just necessarily relying on your own mapping skills to put yeah. the X by marks the spot on this huge no, big territory? No, thankfully I'm a terrible drawer. Well, so good. That we have it all out. electronically. GPS and we just put that up on the laptop when we get home and we can send that to the guys at Wildlife Wonders. Fantastic. Okay, I've already fallen for him, but now it's time to see Jimmy strut his stuff and sniff out some fox scat. Well, maybe one more pat. Search. Yes, good boy, Jim. Good find. <laughs> He's so, so ready, so keen. And I notice he really points out, he uses his nose a lot to communicate. Yeah, he does, which is very helpful. It's, for now, it's, it's fine, I can, I can see where it is. But um, if we're out somewhere and it's, it's a lot thicker vegetation, yeah. that point is really helpful and can save a lot of time. So how long did it take to train these sort of skills? I guess it varies on the dog, but mm. for Jimmy, I mean, he was up and running, I'd say in three months. Wow, that's yeah, incredible. Yeah, so took about three months and that was his scent work, but also making sure he operates safely in the environment as well. Yeah. So getting all our safety communication in, as well as our detection work. Jim, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> what a good dog. And I guess one of the negative stereotypes about rescue dogs is maybe that, especially an older dog, isn't able to learn anything new. And, yeah. you know, if you don't have them from a puppy, you can't train them in a specific way. But Jimmy's really proof that that's not the case. <laughs> no, I don't think, I think there's, yeah, there's never really any absolutes in dog training. If you ever, if anyone ever <laughs> thinks there is, the next dog comes along to, to disprove it. And I think rescue dogs and dogs of any age could, could do this work. It's just about them having the, the willingness and the want to do it. And it's about finding the right motivation. And you see with Jimmy there, he's, <laughs> yeah, he'll do this all day for the ball. Yeah. It's, it's simple work, but it's, it's fun. That's great. This is all a game for him, you know? So it's like a big kind of treasure hunt. Mm. So he goes out and finds the, t today it's been fox scats and Part of that game, that treasure hunt, is then the reward, which is just more play, except this time it involves me. So How exciting. It's a win-win, yeah. What a dream job for Jimmy, because Jimmy's obviously a rescue, as we talked about. Yeah. So he's really landed on his feet to come and live with you and have this amazing relationship and then have this dream job where he gets to go out and play every single day. Yeah, well, he has a job now. He has a human now. 
he actually has a pack now. He's got, mm. you know, his, his, brothers, other, and his brothers and sisters yeah. that he takes care of back home. You know, he's got Tracy as well. So his life for a, a, a dog that maybe didn't have the greatest start, his life is now very full and very, very much just full of fun for him. Mm. And that's, that's what it's all about for us. As long as the dogs are out there and having fun, if they're not having fun, they're probably not going to be doing a great job. You're probably not going to be getting the best data. Yeah. So when they're having fun, that's just so important in every aspect. Today I'm in the western suburbs of Geelong visiting Montpellier Primary School. Here a bunch of lovable dogs are helping young students gain confidence while reading. Well, I'm here with Kylie and Ollie from Story Dogs. Kylie, thanks for thanks for joining us today. So you're you've just recently become involved in the program. I have, yes, yes, um, yeah. Because COVID hit last year, we were unable to to start until this year. Mm. Um, so yeah, we've just been doing term one, and now it's term two. And, and what appealed to you about the program? Ah, uh, just bringing the joy of reading to children, just just to show them that you know it's a really great thing to read. Yeah, because um, you have a background in education as well yourself? Yeah, I do. And Ollie, I understand, is a rescue, is that right? He is a rescue, yes. We've had Ollie for um, four years now and um, yeah, very fortunate to adopt him. So Ollie obviously has a great temperament for this this work? He does, yes. 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 Um, when we adopted him, um, uh, the rescue person recommend, or said that he was uh, a suitable for an assistance, being a, an yeah, assistance great. dog. And, yeah, so. and that's because he's obviously so gentle. Yes. He's got really nice, lovely, calm energy. He does. <laughs> but At I understand. Times. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, not... not a super young boy, he's not a puppy, but he, you were saying he needs to burn off a lot of energy before he comes to these He these does, he does. Jobs. We try to give him a bit of a run around yeah. in the morning before um, before he does his sessions. So. Yeah, and then when he's when he's calm, he's reading, being read to by the kids, he's getting up and having an explore right now. <laughs> he's having um, an explore. <laughs> So he, he needs a bit of exercise and he's also a bit food motivated, I heard, much he's like myself. very food motivated, yes, indeed. He will uh, steal at any opportunity he can get. Oh, so, so you've got to hide the school lunch boxes, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and how do you work that with um, re re rewarding uh, Ollie for his work at the program? Do you give a treat every time a child reads a book or...? No, no. So Ollie has to wait uh, for the entire session to be finished. Sit down, Ollie. <laughs> he has to wait for his whole session to be finished yeah. and then um, when we go out to the car he gets his, his treat reward. And is that um, for any particular reason that you, you like to run it that way? Uh, I like to do it that way so that then he's actually focused on the children and, and on the session yeah. rather than being focused on Just his waiting, reward. Waiting for yes. that treat. Yes. Well I think he's waiting, waiting, ready to get ready right now. Well, yeah. Thanks so much Kylie, that's, that's okay. great. Thanks for having me. From Kylie and Ollie to Jeff and Wally. Hello, I'm Jeff from Story Dogs, and this is Wally. He's come to help you and help me read this book to you. Do you think you enjoy doing that? Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think the book's called? Space. Give me space. Well, I'm here with Jeff, and Jeff, this little sleepy guy, is Wally. Yes, that's, he's our little cabby. <laughs> <laughs> he's very small, isn't he? He's, he is He's tiny. a little guy, but he's not a puppy. No, he's three years old. Surprise. Yep. Everybody thinks he's a puppy. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone pulls him up wherever we go. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's great. And he's relatively new to this program? Yes, yeah, we started um, at Star of the Sea in February, March. Yeah. Mm. So, going really well. And then we've got a black hole over here. And what else do you think's in the picture? Maybe a telescope? Yeah. What else have we got? A bin. Yeah. A bin. Yeah. What What interested you about the Reading Dogs program? Um, I wanted to do something for the local school because I have five grandchildren there. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and we we're you know trying to work out something to do, and I heard about Story Dogs on the radio mm. and uh, inquired from there and then did a few tests and things and made sure that Wally was okay for the program. Mm. What, what sort of things were you looking at with, with Wally? 
Well, you know, weather is calm and, yeah. and he doesn't cause any problems. Seems and, pretty calm. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've just retired mm. and I was a pharmacist out at McKellar Centre and Wally used to come with me to work a couple of days a week. And okay, he, wow. Yeah. He used to be a mascot, you know, and um, go around and greet some of the patients mm -hmm. and sit on their laps and all that sort so of stuff. So he's a hard-working dog. Oh, yeah. He's used he, to working. Yeah, he loves it. You know, so, <laughs> and yeah. I guess between five grandchildren and all the customers of your pharmacy, he's had a lot of exposure to kids as well. Yes, yeah, he loves it. Yeah, well, we've got five grandchildren at the school and yeah. we've got uh, ten in total. So, oh, so ten, seen, five little ones yeah, in addition. Yeah, yeah so wow. we've got some other little ones. Yeah, so they all enjoy Wally's company. Yeah. And he's really calm with them. And, and do you think it. he enjoys the program as well? He seems to. Yeah. When we arrive at the school, he seems to uh, get pretty excited and enjoys the, all the kids coming around and patting him. He, he hates a cuddle. <laughs> yes, but, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. But no, he enjoys it. And was there any particular reason you felt like literacy was, was a, an important thing? Yeah, well, my mum is 90 and um, she left school at 11. And wow. She, and she yeah. can't, can't read or write. And, which we only found out later. Yeah. She had all these strategies that she used to get by. She was very clever. Yeah. Had a really good. She's got a really good memory in that. Yeah. So and so she's she compensated. Yeah. So how old were you when when this when you worked this out? Well, she was sixty, so it's thirty years yeah. ago. So yeah. I was in my mid thirties. That's a long time. Yeah, and just always felt there was something, but mm. never really knew about it. So I, you know, when we started doing it, I was saying to mum because we ring her every day. Yeah. And I said. You know, I'm going to school, I'm going to do these story dogs and just to help children read. And she said, oh, I wish that was around when I was at yeah. school. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a bit of a buzz, yeah. you know. And, and how magical for her to be seeing her great-grandchildren mm. at this primary school, yeah. having all this support. Yeah, it's something never had. You know, mm. I struggled with reading when I was at primary school. Mm. I was in a class of 50 yeah. and you could, you could sneak through without... Get lost. You totally lost. Yeah. I got to high school and yeah, really struggled. I was lucky that one of the librarians there um, took me under a wing and encouraged me to read. So it was hard work though. One day, Ola will become an astronaut. She will leave the Earth behind. But for now, she is an astronaut in waiting. You must be this tall to be an astronaut. Have you ever been to those rides where you've got to have to be a certain height? Yes. Isn't that frustrating? Yeah. 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 So we noticed we, we saw you run a session with, with Wally, and Wally, Wally did a lot of sleeping through the session. Oh, yes. um, but you and the other volunteers, you, you, um, you have a great way of, of engaging the children when, when you read. Thank you. Is that, um, for you, was that kind of instinctive to, to do that? Oh. Uh, like with the ten children, our grandchildren, yeah. um, my wife encourages me to read yeah. a little bit to them, yeah. and she's the power behind it. You know, she's always read to our children yeah. and, and grandchildren, and she's just encouraged me to get involved. Mm. So initially, I wasn't big on it, but a bit shy, uh, maybe. Yeah, a bit yeah. nervous about yeah. it. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's just come along. I, I guess, suppose. do you think maybe ha ha having been a child that struggled a bit with reading to start as well, you have a bit of that empathy for, Pretty for the much, kids? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I, you know, like, if they can get a joy out of their reading early, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, and what a wonderful way to bring joy to reading, oh. having a little mate here. What do you think the blue planet was? The Earth. Well done, everybody. That was a good one, wasn't it? Suspended in space, her beautiful blue home now shimmering even more brightly than before. Well, thanks so much. Um, no we'll, I guess we'll let, uh, let Wally get on with this busy nap. Yeah, he's um, just about passed out. Yeah, he's, he's had a big he's day. He's working hard. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, great. Jeff. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Before I left for the day, I wanted to know how people at home could support the Story Dogs initiative. So there's actually three ways that you can participate in Story Dogs. The first way, of course, is to become a volunteer with your, yep. with your dog and, and come along to the schools. The second way is actually the school itself who wants to become and have the program at their school. And the third way is by sponsoring the dog. Mm. So it's only $500 a year to sponsor oh, a Story it's, Dog. Gee, it's not and much, then, is it, for look, a big impact? The results are worth it, absolutely yeah. worth it. We get some fantastic results. Their confidence soars, um, anxiety lowers, and of course their skills improve. Yeah. So that's it's worth every cent. And yeah. so the best way to do that would be to look on our website, storydocs.org.au. 
fantastic. I might look that up. I'm not sure if my, my dog is as well behaved as Penny, but... Well, all the dogs are behaviour assist. <laughs> okay. So, so we, could, we would let our professional dog trainer make that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thanks for taking this trip down memory lane. We've had so much fun telling these stories and we're glad you got to relive them once more. A brand new story next week, so I'll see you then for more Dog Jobs Australia.